Bukit Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have a breaking uh, story this morning. came out actually yesterday evening as I was going on air. And that is that the UK has actually blocked the EU support for an Israel-Palestinian peace meeting in Paris. And largely in part due to the, uh, well not just in part, but directly with the involvement of President-elect Donald Trump. Donald Trump has actually called the UK and was asking them to get involved and to veto any future UN-Israel resolutions. Now, this is in complete conflict with Pope Francis, who has not only already declared a Palestinian state, but just the other day met Mahmoud Abbas inside of Rome, Italy, establishing their particular um, uh, ties there with their uh, um, embassy that was set up in Vatican City. The Pope is really pushing for a Palestinian state with Jerusalem being their capital. And no doubt the reason being is because the Pope wants to get a hold of Jerusalem himself. But that kind of puts it at odds with President-elect Donald Trump because he's talking about moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Another thing that according to the Arabic world will ignite the entire Middle East into bloodshed if it's not already going to happen because of what Obama did by having his ambassador to abstain from the vote itself uh, that he did back in December when Resolution 2334 passed through the United Nations and then, of course, was now being voted on by 70 nations. But by the grace of God, the UK did actually abstain and would not sign off on the closing language of this particular resolution. Interesting. It makes you wonder just exactly what type of uh, struggle is going on with the elites of the world. The Pope of Rome and practically every other nation around the world is certainly in favor of a Palestinian state and ousting the Jews from both Judea and Samaria. And as I stated the other day, I actually stated this to uh, one of the, the people. Let me just see if I actually have his photo up here. I don't know if I put it up or not. Um, I know I do have it though. Let me just pull this up real quick here. I know I've got it somewhere on our screen here. Uh, there was a man, I don't have it on the screen, I apologize, that my wife interviewed. Uh, in fact, if you looked on Israeli News Live, the interview she did the other day with the, uh, uh, the gentleman that was uh, the organizer of the pro-Israel rally outside of the Israeli embassy, I mentioned to him that if I had one opportunity to question John Kerry while he was there, and I just barely missed him, by the way, because of having to catch the plane there, uh, that I would ask him this, and that is, how do you expect Israel to trust the United Nations when the United Nations, when they were formerly the League of Nations, and even as the UN, has broke every promise to the Jewish people for a homeland from 1920 to 1922, 1947, and continuing on. Israel has no no ability to trust the United Nations when they break promise after promise, land that they, when it was not evenly, even heaven, heavily uh, populated by Arab, the Arabic people, when this whole country, especially the land that was west of the Jordan River, was actually considered completely desolate practically by the Arabic peoples. But during the Holocaust, during the years from 1940 to 46, during the Second World War, when Jews were not allowed to immigrate to the land that was promised to them, but instead there was a mass immigration of Egyptian and Jordanian uh, citizens that came in to occupy the land to prevent the, Israel, the Jewish people from returning to their homeland. And so that would have been one of my major questions there. So Trump calls on the UK to veto, the, veto any future UN resolutions, which has had a profound impact on the event that happened the other day. Uh, speaking of those things there, let me just share with you some of the images that we had taken ourselves while we were there, uh, quite, quite a few of them, but uh, some of the ambassadors that came out from the different nations that were there, the Middle Eastern nations as well, the, the Far East, different representatives that, that were there. Uh, we were able to capture, you know, and of course there were speakers at the pro-Israeli rally there inside, uh, just outside the Israeli embassy in France there. Uh, the rally was quite large. I would, they, they say it was in the hundreds. I would say more than a thousand people had rallied together. Not only was it uh, uh, the Jewish community that was rallying, rallying inside of uh, France there, but we also saw a large number of uh, pro-Israel Christian supporters that it came from all over Europe. In fact, one of uh, our friends that listens to Israeli News Live from Holland was even there. 
I uh, got my name yelled out of the crowd and a very precious brother that came up and said, I listen to you daily. And the Norwegian uh, uh, telecaster that was there, he was amazed to see that, you know, that we had been recognized by the people in the crowd there. Um, but like I said, there was a lot of French uh, M M M K uh, MP uh, members, parliament members that were there speaking in support of Israel. So it was very passionate for the Jewish people to hear these, this type of stand with Israel in that time. Uh, but also another thing that erupted, and this is something you can see Yana right here on your screen. You see her from the back side there. She gets right up into the thick of it all because what happened, a lot of the pro-Israel supporters, and they knew about this, no doubt, because we had revealed where the convention was being held at. So the, the pro-Israeli supporters came there to protest the UN meeting. And Yana was able to capture, we'll share with you the video images later and a broadcast she'll do on this, where the police were even pushing the pro-Israeli supporters back. They didn't want them coming near uh, the conference whatsoever, and, and no doubt because they didn't have any uh, anti-Israel uh, advocates there. So they'd kept it such hush-hush, but they were pushing them back, trying to keep them out. Uh, not a huge crowd, but a decent-sized crowd had showed up to, to be able to check the events that were happening there. Uh, anyway, that's our pretty much the latest that we have on the broadcast to update you there. More things to come. Special guest is here with us in the office already that we'll be interviewing later today. Uh, several broadcasts will air on Yana's channel, Rise Up Children of God, and one of those broadcasts will air later this evening on Israeli News Live. Also, if you want to listen in this evening, 6.30 p.m. our time here in Europe, we will be going on air with Lisa Haven in her broadcast there. She's invited us to come on to speak about the Middle East peace process that happened in Paris, France. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.